okay, we're going to do another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have, yes, another Seiko diver that I'm excited about. One that I've been excited about for a while, even so much to the point to where I was excited about this piece before I even knew they were going to bring it out. Okay, this is a Seiko, a little bit about the brand. They were founded back in 1881. They're Japanese of origin and now have factories throughout Asia. They cover all market segments from entry level to high end. In terms of the type of watch, this is a dive watch, some key common characteristics. In design language, you're looking for a diver. Of course, you're gonna want water resistance, typically through some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelets. This is the Prospex model SPB. 317, uh, also known as the Slim Turtle, and it's basically a modern reinterpretation of Seiko's original 6105-8000 Heritage Turtle um, from back in 1968. Um, and basically it has the thinnest case to date for any Seiko automatic diver's watch. Now it's not to say that it's the thinnest watch with uh, 200 meters of water resistance, but in terms of a dedicated dive watch with a rotating bezel specifically for dive timing, this is the thinnest one. And it comes in at uh, right around uh, 12.5 millimeters thick, including the crystal. Uh, not including the crystal, I think it's closer to 12.25. Uh, now, this is uh, this is a nice one. Uh, one of the main tricks that they used to help thin down that uh, total number is that they actually did recess the brand's iconic wave logo on the case back, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, so yeah, I was really excited about this piece. I've been a big fan of the 6105 for a very long time to the point to where I even had Seiko mods kind of built within the same vein of this. So it was really exciting to see Seiko do a reinterpretation because it's not a flat out reissue. It definitely is taking and blending the classic with the modern. So I'm really excited about that and uh, just be prepared for that guys. So let's go ahead, strap in, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right guys, so before we pick it up, actually let's do this. Some of you are already noticing it's not on the factory strap. Here's the factory strap. Uh, that it comes on. It's very well made. It's actually very similar to the one that you would see on um, some of the other SPB models uh, that came out previously, uh, except the notable change being the buckle here, the tang buckle, I think actually flows a little bit better, although it does not look quite, I think, as fancy as before. Um, it actually, I think, aesthetically um, and, and functionally uh, works better and it flows, especially with the thin down case. So I think they made the right choice by not using that flared buckle, although the flared buckle was a little bit meatier and more milled and highly finished. Um, you know, that's pretty much the only difference in terms of that. The strap material is very nice. I'm just not really crazy about the actual texturing that they have within the strap itself. Um, you know, I think I prefer more traditional Tropic style uh, patterning in, uh, you know, versus this, but it's definitely a nice strap, nice to wear. I will say it's a bit thick on this, uh, portion here, which does make it feel like it comes away from the case ends a bit when you do have it on wrist, so it doesn't flow quite as well as um, some other options, which in another video, we'll try some other strap options. But for this video, we're gonna have it on this Haviston Parade strap, and let's take a close look, guys. Some of you are looking at this and thinking, man, that is just a very well-balanced and iconically Seiko Seiko dive watch and you're right um, honestly it wasn't until what came after this watch which was the original turtles um, those uh, pretty much are what made Seiko divers super popular although there were other iterations and other watches that were technically very successful and you know did have cult like followings in terms of the mainstream uh, it was pretty much a future version of what this watch case spawned that did eventually become kind of what helped Seiko get out to the mass market. Now, uh, some of you are thinking, man, what about the SPB143 or SPDC101, depending on what market you're looking at? 
uh, yeah, they are very, they have a super similar look to them. I will say, of course, uh, with the 62 MAS style, oh, let me get the, let me get a little bit of the dust off of this bad boy here. Um, with this one here, of course, it's going to be a bit more dressy looking. Um, but I think in terms of the nice thing is since it's thin, you can wear it on a NATO and uh, or a nylon or any kind of pass through strap and it still feels quite nice and it, like it's hugging the wrist. I've ended up keeping this one more so on the bracelet. And then uh, to talk about the, the th trick with the thickness, as you can see, there's the medallion there that is very common to Seiko divers and you can see that it's 3D and it sticks out a bit. It does add a little extra thickness for when you are measuring the thickness, although it typically just gets pressed into your wrist. Um, on this model here, uh, oh, and another bonus for you guys to notice is look, check out how smooth this thing with the factory fat spring bars and everything, it just, slides in and out beautifully but check that out it's actually recessed and that's something that i haven't really seen too many people talk about in terms of reviews i mean there are not that there's a ton of reviews for this piece out yet because it is still relatively new big shout out by the way to uh righttime.com out of colorado they have really great customer service and uh you know really impressive inventory when it comes to seiko grand seiko and a ton of other popular brands so check them out i'll leave a link down in the description that's who i got this from and you know i got it from the first place that had it in stock and it was them uh so you know big shout out to them but as you can see it is recessed there so instead of sticking out i mean i guess it does somewhat still stick out a little bit but that main back round is is inset versus it starting basically being outset and then sticking out even more for the wave motif so as you can see there the medallions on the back um, are just a little bit different and this thing is beautiful check that case out guys that undercut is just gorgeous the brushing is really nicely done as well so let's go ahead and run this back through here and just uh get into it uh when it comes to the diameter this is a 41 millimeter watch which is great so it wears very nicely uh, it's only again 12 and a half millimeters thick and that's pretty much ultimate spec including the crystal at its very peak and any piece of that medallion that's sticking out at all um, it's 46.9, so just under 47 millimeters lug to lug. It has stainless steel, of course, and then it has that super hard coating uh, known as Dia Shield in most markets. And uh, it works really well, and it only adds a slight tint, I would say, that's hardly noticeable in terms of darkening the steel itself. It's not like this is going to render as some type of titanium or a different type of alloy. It definitely looks and feels like a steel watch. It just has a little extra coating and, a, you know, harder surface treatment that's done there. Um, and it's really beautiful. Now, in terms of the crystal, it's a sapphire and it, it has a slight dome to it. So you only really notice it once you're at a very extreme angle. So you do get a little bit of visual distortion, which I guess can tie into a bit of that uh, vintage nostalgia that this layout does evoke. But... I will say I would have preferred if they just would have went with a flat sapphire, um, you know, like they did with the Marine Master uh, 200 reduced. Uh, it just, for me, uh, that's what I would have preferred and it would have kept it even thinner. Uh, but, you know, I, I, this is one of those things where I'm sure underwater it does help as well, uh, which is where a lot of that magnifies when you do have any type of doming on the crystal. Now, in terms of the bezel action, it's really great. Check this out. Ooh. Lines up beautifully, so fast or slow. That is a dialed in bezel action and I enjoy it. So very nice and then of course the tactile grip that's on here is really well done even uh, as you can notice 
it looks like it probably was first polished and then satinized with the brushing because then in between each one of those teeth has a little bit of a glint to it like there was a polish that was underneath so very very cool from that perspective and you can see this black dial with black bezel option is very nice not quite of course as as uh you know technically fancy or nice as you're getting with the sunray finish here as well as that nice brushing on the steel bezel insert versus i'm sure here you're getting an aluminum bezel insert um which you know it's underneath the coating so it doesn't really matter and if i found out that they, it was a steel bezel insert it's not like it would impress me any more or less now in terms of uh what's inside here same movement very popular these days the 6r35 which has a 70 hour power reserve which is up 20 hours over your standard 6r15 and then up even higher over something from the 4r range where you're going to get typically like a 38 hour power reserve so 70 hour power reserve still 3 hertz at a 21 600 vibrations per hour uh that's typical out of the box uh, standard in terms of the accuracy range is going to be minus 15 to plus 25. I'm right now at about dead. I I don't know how I get very lucky with these Seikos because I hear some people really complain about them. But uh, I have a great track record, track record with these. This is running at maybe like plus one a day so far. But it's only been a couple days. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. And also, since it's an unregulated movement, it doesn't really matter what my results are or anybody else's are. It's gonna matter what results you get while you have it on the wrist. Now, if it was regulated anyway and they had any type of guarantee or it was you know COSC certified or something like that, then yeah, then absolutely take that money to the bank. But in these cases, I think people do get a little wound up over you know individual results, which may vary. Now, in terms of the case back, you saw that it was solid and stamped with some etching there for the information. The indices, as you can see, are nicely raised. Um, you do have the date hidden there, actually behind the minute hand, uh, right there in between the four and the five, so about the 4.30 position on uh, the dial. And one thing that's really special about it is they actually did parallel um, font. So you can see there, uh, everything reads straight across versus it being at an angle, and then the whole cut out there is actually a circular pattern which i think is another nice touch and helps the watch look very finished a lot of that has to do with the changes in terms of the iso standards to where you needed to have a loomed pip essentially at uh every hour marking every five minutes which here i was very fortunate because i think aesthetically it looks very nice uh here uh, before they shoehorned that that extra uh pip um, you know to the outer portion so you still get that nicely beveled action there on the uh, on that beautifully framed uh, I shouldn't say framed it's just beveled date window uh, which the bevel frames the date window really nicely on the dial uh, but if you get a newer iteration of one of these watches it'll have basically off in the uh, outer track there you'd see an additional loom pip which some people get very thrown off by it I don't mind it at all really but you know of course if I had to choose I would choose this um, but if I'm not able to choose that then this is definitely a beautiful idea because once you have the honestly at a glance it reads as a no date and then you get down into it and then of course you notice that the the date functionality there but it's thought out and not an afterthought it's well executed and well integrated which i can appreciate and then in the dark of course it's going to render perfectly symmetrical and uh everybody likes that now in terms of how much i've liked this watch design Here's a turtle reissue <laughs> that was modded way back when to look like the old uh, 6105. Of course, it's bigger. Um, you know, this is the standard turtle reissue um, case custom bezel. I mean, now they're they're more available in terms of modders. You don't have to get one custom machined like I did. Um, give a bunch of feedback and whatnot in terms of the design. Um, but you can see here, and then it also has the... Uh, 
This is the Stargate uh, dial, which has a similar layout in terms of matching that similar uh, original 6105 with the, just a little bit more elongated there on the uh, the markers, uh, which is a, a similar theme. And then the handset is actually from the, an anniversary uh, Sumo, which uh, paid tribute to the uh, original 62 MAS. Uh, divers of the of the days of old so um and then you can see of course i do have it on this nice uh strap that was actually let's say from strap code um and uh yeah it, it definitely scratched that itch for a long time and then this came along and it was really exciting to see kind of uh, Seiko's take on that. Of course, they went more on the Prospects line style. Uh, you can see the Prospects X versus here. This was actually before uh, the Prospects were really predominant and, and you know, with the markings and whatnot. So this dial was, I believe, from a Seiko Superior line technically um, because that's what the Star, uh, Seiko Stargate fell under. But you can see similar aesthetic that I've enjoyed for a long time. So this really answers that call because it shrinks down that beautiful aesthetic aesthetic right the from here um you know which is like a 45 millimeter into something that's closer to a 41 millimeter diameter and then you can even see the shape of the case it's very similar um you know and it just they just rounded it off a little bit but still you know especially when you move that crown position to four o'clock that's iconic seiko uh which i think is really great and you know, I, I'm a big fan, and if you're wondering where the turtle is on a Seiko turtle, there it is. Uh, so <laughs> there's the legs, and there's the head. And on other turtles, uh, depending on the grip uh, style, it will look more like a turtle, right? When you have the, the double sets of kind of diamond gripping, it'll look more like a turtle shell. But you can see there's a little turtle right there, and, you know, a lot of people just regular turtle shell size but i always thought that was kind of a neat little you know animation there where you kind of see two little legs popping out and a head and of course a shell so with all that said let's actually get this piece on wrist and see how it wears okay guys as you can see on my seven and a quarter to about seven and a half inch wrist this wears really really beautifully um and especially having it on the NATO uh, really just kind of elongates this very, you know, I should say not very, but relatively stubby silhouette and uh, gives it a little bit more wrist presence. For, so for those of you that might have an even bigger wrist than mine, uh, this is definitely a watch that although um, it is can, you know, it can be worn very small and feels very light and, and compact on the wrist. It still has a ton of visual punch. And again, you can kind of elongate that by adding it onto a strap like this. And you can see even with the extra layer of fabric underneath, it still wears really beautifully and still relatively low on the wrist, which is great. Uh, so that's very nice and feels very, very comfortable and looks fantastic. Definitely has that vintage aesthetic, very retro um, in its approach and its dial. Um, but then it has this kind of nice muted and very classic subdued black and steel layout, which I can absolutely appreciate. Um, getting into some more of the specs that I forgot to cover earlier, guys. Uh, of course, you're going to get a uh, nice handset on there that are brushed and polished. Um, and then you're going to get brightly, uh, you know, done Seiko Luma Bright, which is fantastic. You're also getting that little pop of red on that seconds hand which is great in terms of just initial kind of eye-catching nature even in daylight uh, which does help also you can see it has the text for divers 200 meters and for to carry that text that means that it meets or exceeds those iso standards to carry it so that's always nice the lugs are 22 millimeters and drilled uh, which makes it a real uh you know a gem to swap out some straps and there'll definitely be future segments where i try a couple of different straps ranging from oem to aftermarket and uh you know kind of get a little strap showcase on this piece just to show you how versatile it is um and you know there's a reason why i didn't choose this on the bracelet the bracelet didn't really excite me i wish they would have maybe done an h-link style or possibly a jubilee style bracelet um or you know even just a standard three link uh but instead they kind of went with this five link which uh just 
it, it just didn't really speak to me in terms of the aesthetic and flowing with the case. It looks like a nice enough bracelet, but doesn't really scream diver to me. Definitely uh, looks more uh, like something you'd see on a pilot's watch. Uh, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below though. Um, and then yeah, with the 20 millimeter lugs, it does come on that nice black silicone dive strap, which has a nice uh, taper and everything like that. Stainless steel tang buckle and that signed stainless steel keeper is very nice and makes the watch feel very official. But I mean, it's how often can you put a Seiko diver on a, a, a fabric strap and it still feel so at home on the wrist? I mean, the lack of thickness here really gives you that opportunity and opens that door, which I can absolutely appreciate. But with that said, let's actually get this piece off the wrist, uh, laid out for some loom shots, a light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, very legible and just very beautiful, um, very well balanced. You're not getting any weird cutoffs or anything like that. Um, any partial pips, uh, it just renders very, very legible. And of course you do have the double batons at the 12 o'clock, which is very nice. And then you have that nicely shielded, uh, you know, loom pip within the bezel insert. So although you're not getting, uh, you know, a ceramic insert, it is shielded. Uh, so that's nice uh, and something that can be a shortcoming with ceramic inserts from time to time uh, when they are uh, shielding that loom pip because then the loom on that pip can get uh, quite patinaed um, and just not really match the rest of the dial. So uh, one thing I really like to do when I'm checking out the loom is actually get a little bit of low light transition to see just what the watch renders like in less than optimal lighting because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be, you know, in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs or the shade of a tree. Maybe it's just spending some time in your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see what the colors, the finishes, how it all renders like in less than optimal lighting to even include some harsh high contrast lighting, which uh, would typically expose any type of wear and tear or defects within the finish. And you can see that the light just glides beautifully over that brushing. And you can actually notice how well the light is being navigated and absorbed and partially reflected on the matte surfaces of that beautifully, uh, I'd say perfectly matching bezel insert and the matte finish on the dial. So that's a very nice feature there in terms of those just continuing to uh, look right and look solid and just uh, have a finished and thought out look. You'd be surprised how many times you can get some wild play out of watches where they just weren't that thought out. I will say that Seiko is pretty good at playing with finishing and uh, finishes, whether it be in the case or the dial um, and that bezel you saw, the, the brushing that's on that SBDC 101 um, and yeah, this is just very nice. Nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but it just has that beautiful standard look. And that's why it has such a clean military aesthetic. Um, and you know, these were hugely popular uh, during the Vietnam era, the original models that these are based on in terms of the 6105. Um, and in various iterations to include the Captain Willard style case where they had the uh, actual protruding crown guards that made it um, a little bit more asymmetrical. But here I think it's just a really handsome piece. Uh, on the wrist it's really great wearing, well balanced. Um, the sizing, it's just right there in that sweet spot where it's not too big, it's not too small, it just hits. And then in terms of model variations, there's the SPB313, which is the white dial with uh, white bezel markers. Um, and then of course, it, it has a, a black bezel and then a steel bracelet. There's also the SPB 
315, which is a black dial with gold bezel markers over a black uh, bezel insert with a uh, steel bracelet as well. And then this is the model, of course, which is the black on black with the silicone strap um, as seen, um, but I just swapped out the strap on it. And then again, comment below if you're excited about seeing this on some other straps because this is a real strap monster. As much as I love the 143, um, I ended up just always wearing it on the bracelet, uh, honestly. It just flows really well with the bracelet. And for me, there's not too much crossover, even though they're very similar looking watches. Um, at a glance, this it just fulfills a completely different uh, place for me, which is the strap watch um, versus the bracelet watch. It's not to say that if strap code doesn't come out with some really cool H-Link um, bracelet that I, I wouldn't be excited about it, or Uncle Seiko, if you uh, put your throw your hat <laughs> into the ring there, I'd love that as well. But because this does have that Dia Shield coating, it always kind of makes me reluctant to put on an aftermarket bracelet that doesn't have the matching coating because there can be a slight variation in terms of the tonality there. Um, but it doesn't bother everybody, but it is something that can be a bit of a sticking point um, from my perspective. Now, in terms of comparable models, while this Seiko isn't, you know, I should say Seiko in general, honestly, um, Seiko Prospects, uh, no, I, I think generally Seiko, um, while they haven't been kind of the clear value king like they once were, this re you know this reimagining of a historic skin diver is still very competitive. I think both both against Asian produced Mike and um, you know Asian produced micro brand um, and other Asian uh, made you know Japanese divers from uh, some of Seiko's uh, you know cousins and and running mates um, from a, from a you know from across the way so um and then of course mainstream swiss counterparts i think this is still a really enticing watch if you were shopping it against uh you know something out of the swatch group whether it be mito certina or hamilton i think this aesthetically uh you know although it might not have um you know some of the bells and whistles in terms of some of the components um this is still i think just gorgeous and it hits the spots and and it's still really finely executed um so you know if we if if we're gonna give things like uh the black bay 58 a pass on on having an aluminum bezel insert i think we can give this one a pass uh for a lot less money um, you know, $900 MSRP, or you can get it for a little bit less. Um, and, you know, I'm sure in a couple of years, you'll find it for even less uh, once they become more and more abundant and available. So the bottom line for me, this has Seiko's in-house qualities packed into a slim and iconic package for under a thousand bucks. And I like that. And it's something that I think helped, um, you know, the SPB 143, um become so popular as well as the marine master um you know 200 reduced uh, and and i think they have really really done some great things within this market of just those kind of thousand dollar ish seiko divers that just do so much and can give you so much um and and yeah and you can kind of own them all still and and uh not have too much crossover which is pretty wild so uh seiko hasn't been about building the perfect watch they've always been about you know helping you build that collection by introducing things with just a little couple of tweaks and some quirks and some extra personality uh you know dripping uh out of these these gorgeous designs so with that said this isn't going to be the last video you're going to see of this watch there'll definitely be some more comparisons we'll do some size comparisons maybe just talk about the turtle evolution in general you guys know how much i love the mini turtle so maybe a mini turtle slim turtle turtle reissue uh turtle mod video will be coming as well and then probably something to you know maybe take a deeper look into uh, the evolution of the, the turtle case shape in general and then seeing how that even eventually led to the popular SKX silhouette um, because the you know these were really those precursors um, to that particular design language you know as much as I love the 62 MAS um, and the Marine Master and everything that they represent within Seiko's history um, in terms of the mass you know, um, mass produced parts that I should say mass produced pieces that got a lot of attention and, you know, a lot of risk time and, and really helped spread and uh, strengthen the Seiko brand. 
uh, it all kind of starts here at this DNA with the four o'clock crown with that barrel shaped case um, it definitely took a turn starting here so very cool even down to the dual uh, indices at the 12 o'clock it's just there's so much iconic Seiko DNA in this design so I'm really happy that they finally got their day um, as a really cool reimagined uh, and refined model that it, it just offers so much flexibility I think the white dial looks great as well and the gilt um, Who's to say that they won't eventually find their way into the collection either? I think the white dial would look great on a gray NATO. And then um, the, uh, I think the gilt dial model could, would look great, of course, on maybe uh, a, a couple of different types of straps. Uh, but a Tropic strap is jumping out at me um, in my head. As well as, you know, I, I think if I was going to wear one on the bracelet, it would probably be the gilt dial model because it just, you know, it, it kind of pulls it together a little bit better, I think, um, than this would um, by comparison. So with all that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.